I think it is undisputed today that the COVID-19 pandemic has had serious negative impact, not only on the development of the economy of different countries, but also on the health of people. But at the same time, I think it is also agreed that there have been many corruption cases involving the procurement of medication in general for the public. So all in all, I think a uh, this is a conclusion that has been reached after one looks at what has happened from a corruption perspective uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. So once countries realized that corruption resurfaced during the COVID-19 pandemic as one of the most important issues to be addressed, the question that came up was what strategies and mechanisms should be adopted to address those problems. In 2022, we are celebrating the African Anti-Corruption Day on the theme Strategies and Mechanisms for the Transparent Management of COVID-19 Funds, an apt theme for the times we are living in, if you ask me. The theme speaks to the imperative for intentional measures to be put in place by member states uh, to assure transparency and accountability, even as they respond to, as well as recover from the pandemic. Some of these effective strategies that member states may consider implementing, and which some of them are already implementing to varying degrees, include, but are not limited to, a strong political stance and action against uh, misuse of COVID-19 funds, use of interim uh, audits uh, during the pandemic, strong citizen engagement uh, through establishment of whistleblower channels on the management of COVID-19 funds. In terms of specifically what I think uh, is needed, whether it is in Mauritius or elsewhere, there's a need to review some of our laws because we do see that there has been loopholes that have been abused by, uh, or oh, well, taken advantage of, should I say, um, in uh, numerous laws whereby uh, there has been uh, use of those for people who are not necessarily the most deserving, uh, companies that were not the most deserving or who were friends of friends, who have been able to get uh, contracts or who have been able to uh, benefit from, from favours in some way. Therefore, it is important to look at that aspect as it is an aspect uh, meaning the whole aspect of law and uh, legal uh, amendment because it is very important that we have the strength of the laws that is going to be strong enough tomorrow when we are going to um, build, um, when we are going to have uh, such shocks and sh such issues again in the future. And uh, some, some experts predict that COVID is just the start with things like climate change. We may be uh, having much, much more emergencies across the world. Corruption thrives on two things. Thrives on discretion, on discretionary decision making, which can be technical or otherwise. Or oh, secondly, in crisis situation. That's where corruption will thrive. Now, one can put a lot of laws, a lot of systems, and come and say that, listen, these laws are meant now to prevent corruption. But it will not. Unless we address the fundamental. The fundamental being any regime who is serious in combating corruption in whichever context, be it in the context of procurement for COVID, has to act 
along that line, namely the day you really bring up the sanction, you really make people pay to use the common parlance, make people pay for the wrongdoing and therefore sending a strong signal that there's no impunity. It's only then that it's not the law that will prevent corruption. It's the human reaction. The human reaction is about preserving myself, about survival. I will not do something because that something can get me caught and I have to lose something. But enforcement is not the only part of the strategy to address the problem of corruption that came up during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is also important to realize that another part of the strategy that is as important relates to prevention. Prevention basically relates to looking into the system that exists in, that is in place in order to understand what are the risks and the loopholes that exist that prevail and should be uh, rectified. The area where we have started working in relation to the same issue is to try to carry out sensitization campaign in order to educate the public and all the stakeholders about how it is important in the interest of the population's health to minimize and address risk of corruption during the arising from the COVID-19 pandemic.